All right, Precal, today we're going to be talking about arithmetic series. And so I'd like to start today off with a story about a famous mathematician named Carl Gauss. Now, Carl Gauss looks a little old here, but he, when he was young, he was actually in elementary school, Gauss was asked a question. Gauss was asked, what is the sum from 1 to 100? His teacher was having a hard day didn't really want to teach the kids anything new, just wanted them to practice adding numbers. So I said, hey, I'm going to have you add up the numbers from 1 to 100. Now, Gauss, being the great mathematician that he was, even at a young age, instantly said the answer is 50-50. Well, maybe not instantly, but within the span of a couple seconds, he realizes it's 50-50. And the question is, how did Gauss come to this realization? So I'm going to tell you to stop the video now, look at the numbers from 1 to 100, think about a way to maybe attack the problem. Maybe not necessarily find the solution, but look for some patterns, look for some similarities, look for playing around with the numbers and see if you can figure out how he got to 50-50. Or if that can't, you can't see that, maybe how to look at a problem like this to make it a little bit easier to handle. So I'm going to assume that you pause the video and you've tried this, you've messed around with it, you've, you've kind of have an idea of what's going on, and now let's talk about it a little bit. So one thing to do is obviously from 1 to 100, it's a, quite a large number of numbers, so it's hard to play with that. So one suggestion that I always have is that when you're playing with numbers and situations, Take a simpler case. So I'm going to take this sum from 1 to 10. It's still quite long, but I have less, to, obviously less to look at, and that's the key, right? Um, if I'm looking at less, um, if I have a simpler case that I can solve the simpler case, then maybe I can tackle the larger case, right? So we're going to look for some sort of pattern. And one thing that we like to do as mathematicians is we like to play with pairing values or play with sums and moving things around and looking for some similarities. So go ahead, I'll give you a big hint there. Play around with moving around numbers maybe, seeing if you notice any sort of similarities. And so I'm going to say pause the video now, give yourself about three minutes to mess around with it a little bit, see if you can figure out what to do. So I'm going to assume that it's been three minutes. You've had a fun three minutes playing around. Maybe you found a pattern. And the pattern that I'm hoping that you found is that, hey, one in 10. If I put one in 10 together, what do I get? One plus 10 is 11. If I get two and nine, and we put two and nine together, what do you realize you get? I get another 11. Three and eight, another 11. This is a fun game. Four and seven, 11. And five and six and 11. And so what do all these 11s tell me? Well, they tell me that I have five 11s, right? And so five times 11 would give me 55. Now, let's think about this a little bit. What am I, where am I getting one in 10? Well, one in 10 is like the first thing I start with, right? And 10 is the last thing I start with. Okay, so that's easy enough. So 1 plus 10, that's how I got to the 11. And now an interesting question, where did 5 come from, right? Where did this 5 come from? Well, if you look at it, 5 is the pairing, right? So the question is, how do we go about pairing it? Well, if you look at it, then um, you can see the pairs. The pairing is just taking the total number of terms. So this is, let's say this is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term, yada, 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 and this would be the tenth term, right? So we took the, pairing is taking the tenth term and dividing it by two, right? And this is how we got the 55. So we have a way to attack these problems. So now, 
I ask you to find the sum of 1 to 40, what could you do? Well, we just said take the first term. Well, first off, maybe writing it out helps to see, right? Uh, so I wrote out 1 to 40, and then what did I do? Well, I took the first, right, the first term, and the last term, we add them together. So let's, let's play that game. Let's take the first term and the last term, add them together. That's going to give me 41. And now I'm going to multiply by the number of pairs. So if I start with 1 and I end with 40, I have 40 numbers. Divide by 2, I get 41 times 20, which is going to be 820. So we can see that, again, if we tackle 62, 1 to 62, we can see we're just basically playing the same game, right? Take the first term, add the last term. I'm going to multiply by the number of pairs. We know that the number of pairs is just the number of terms, which is 62, divided by 2, which is 31. And so whatever 63 times 31 is, is going to be my answer. So let's have some fun with that. 3, 6, 0, 9, 18. Add those up. Fun. Right? At 1953. I feel like I'm in history class. Okay. And there's my answer. So we have a way of attacking it. We have an approach to it. So this is, this is nice, but what we want to do now is we want to generalize this into some sort of general formula. And what we mean by that is, is instead of just saying, I'm going to take, when I say I take the first and the last, how can I write that as a formula? Well, what we do is we say A1 is the first term. We say An is the nth term which is really like the last term, okay? N is the number of terms. And so I wanna be clear about something here, the number of terms. So we've worked with a specific situation, right? We started with one and we go to 40. So see how many terms do you have? It's just, right, you got 40 terms, right? Because you know from one to 40, that's 40. 1 to 62, that's 62. Uh, 1 to 100 is 101. 1 to 10 is just 10. But the common theme is that it's 1. So if you think about it, you can figure out that to find the number of terms, what do we actually have to do? Well, we take the, the first and the last, and we subtract them. But notice... If I subtract 40 and 1, I get 39. So we have to add 1. So the number of terms is just taking the first place and the last place, finding the difference, and adding 1 to it. Okay? So what do we do with all these variables? Well, we took the first term, we took the last term, we added them together, and we multiplied by the number of pairs. Notice the pair is n over 2. Okay? So this is our general formula to find what we call Sn, which is the sum of the series. Okay, now let me stress something here. What a series is, is when you add up a bunch of numbers that have a common difference. So notice here, the common difference is one. We're jumping by one. Um, here, we're doing the same thing, right? We're jumping by one. I didn't write out the series, from 1 to 62, but that would also be jumping by 1, so we're adding by 1, okay? One last thing I want to talk about is why does this work? Why is it that that what we do is you take the first and the last and you add them together and um, you divide by, you multiply by the number of pairs and that gives you the sum. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to go back to my 1 to 10, because I think 1 to 10 is easy to show this, right? So let me let me rewrite 1 to 10. Let's do this, and let's go back to magenta. So we got 1, 
plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6, plus 7, plus 8, plus 9, plus 10. And so what I want to do here is I'm actually going to focus on 5 and 6. Okay, so we know 5 plus 6 is 11, right? Which is great because going back to this question, right? We saw, hey, when we pair them in this way, we get 11. So if we're going back to 4 and 7, we're saying we're pairing. The question is, why does that become 11 as well, right? And the answer is, is that 4 is the same thing as 5 minus 1, and 7 is the same thing as 6 plus 1. And so what you'll notice that happens is the minus 1, right, right here, and the plus 1, right here, they're going to cancel out, right? And if I jump out even further, the 3 is 5 minus 3, um, right? And the uh, 7, I'm sorry, the 8 is 5 plus 3. I'm like, 5 plus 3 does not equal 7, right? So, again, just to be clear here, because I don't think I'm being clear to myself, right? That's what we're doing here. So again, you'll notice that, and I said three, but I actually uh, meant two, All right? Sorry about that. Let me fix that. Five minus two, five plus two. And again, if you add these two together, what are you gonna realize? Well, if you add them together, you're gonna realize that minus two and that plus two will cancel out. And you're going to be left with, and I apologize, it's not 5, that's 6. 6, 5 plus 6, which is 11. So let me rehash that because I apparently gaffed a little bit here. So if we jump two places back, that is 5 minus 2. If we jump two places forward from 6, that is 6 plus 2. And so we add them together, the minus 2 and the plus 2 cancel out. So that's going to keep happening, right? The next one's going to be, 5 minus, that's 5 minus 3, and that's 6 plus 3. And so the minus 3 and the plus 3 are going to cancel out, and we're left with 5 plus 6. And so because the gaps are always the same, you're always getting that 5 plus 6 in the middle to occur. Okay? And that's why the formula genuinely works. Okay? But once you understand the formula, you understand what, how it works, you get, you're given problems like this, and this is really straightforward. All we got to do is just substitute in the values, right? So uh, what I would recommend is write out the formula, Sn equals n over 2, a1 plus a n. Just make sure you plug in correctly. So a1 is 4, awesome. a n is 100, awesome. Multiply by 25 over 2, which is awesome as well. Clean it up. 25 over 2 is 104. And one thing here that is really beneficial is don't convert, don't do 25 divided by 2, it's 12.5. It's making your life a little more complicated than it has to be. 2 goes both into 10 and to 4. So 10 divided by 2 is 5, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and I'm left with 25 and 52. And you might be thinking, Mr. Anderson, how does that help me? <laughs> it makes it a little easier. Uh, if you want to do some math ninjutsu here, you can break it up to 50 plus 2. And so you're doing 25 times 5, which if you have 5 quarters, you have $1.25. Just tack on the 0. And then 25 times 2 is 50. So when you put these two together, you get 1,300. Also, by the way, when you do 52 times 25, and you get the 20, you get 260, right? You're what you're doing is you're still doing like the five times two is ten. That's coming from there, right? So you're kind of doing the same thing when you do it this way. And you'll see you kind of get the same answer. Okay. Alright, so and at the end of the day, it's what works for you. It doesn't really matter. 
how you approach it. Uh, the next question is find the sum of the first 93 terms. So let's see, how would we do it? Well, we know our formula is Sn equals n over 2 times a1 plus a n. So I guess it makes sense to plug in, right? So what is n? Well, hopefully you realize n is the number of terms. Well, hey, it tells me that right here. It's 93. So I plug in 93. Then it says, what's a1? We know a1 is where we start, which is negative 2. And then we're going to add a n. So what's a n? Huh? Right? We don't know what a n is. We have a gap here. So how are we going to go about finding this gap? Well, let's think about it. We know we start with negative 2, and then we go to 0. By the way, notice here when we have a listing, listings like this, when you have commas instead of plus signs, this is what's called a sequence. So when you're listing numbers, it's a sequence of numbers, okay? So we're starting with negative 2, and we're jumping in increments of 2, which means it's arithmetic, right? as long as you're adding the same amount, you know it's arithmetic. Well, I guess the question is, is how many 2s am I, uh, I'm sorry, how many 2s am I adding to get to 93, right? Because if I add 1, right? would be plus 2, right? If we add another one, it would be 2 times 2, or, right? If we add a third one, it would be 2 times 3, right? So let's think about this for a second. If we jump 1, right? We have two numbers, but we jump only once, right? So we're adding 2, right? We get to 2, we're jumping twice, so now this, this is another plus 2 for a total of plus 4, right? So you're adding 2 twice, but you notice you have 3 terms, right? Go to the next term, which is 4. You're adding 2 once, twice, 3 times. I'm adding 2 3 times, but it's just a to the 4. So if we're playing this game 93 times, then I'm going to start at negative 2, and I'm going to add what? Hopefully you didn't say 93. It's one less, right? That's what the pattern says. It's one less, so instead of 93, it's going to be 92 times, right? And then we're going to multiply by the gap, and the gap here is 2. Okay, and so with that being said, we solve this, and there's our answer. So this is what 2 times 2 is 4, 9 times 2 is 18, negative 2 plus 184 is 182. So notice I did not answer the question, I just found the last term, which is 182. So we're going to plug 182 back in here. You get 93 over 2 times negative 2 plus 182. I am kind of clustered here, so I'm going to take this and move it down here a little bit. Apparently, he took his friend with him. We'll get rid of him. And this is just going to be 93 over 2 times 180, which 2 goes into 180. Leave with 90. Uh, we got 93 times 90, which is what? 93 times 9, tack on a 0. 8370. Actually, and you tack on a different 0, another 0, because it's 0 or more, right? So there we go. And there we go, okay? Uh, there are more problems here, but I think from here, it's uh, pretty straightforward as to what to do. So, I hope that this makes sense. I hope you are looking at this and thinking to yourself, hey, this isn't so bad. And I'll see you in the next video. I want to stress here that as we work through this, we 
in the end right here when I did this right here, what I wrote here is the sequence formula. You notice it's the same thing as this actually. And the reason why, we started here, negative two. Notice that is the first term. Uh, what's my place? Uh, right here. Um, n minus two, n is the number of terms. So notice this was originally 93. We took away one. And now we're at 92, right? And that's again because you're counting the gaps. You're not counting every single digit, right? And then times two because that is d, which is the difference. So what we just did here is the formula, and this is really the point of what I was trying to I'm trying to show you guys, which is you don't need to memorize these things. You need to understand these things. So that's one of the big lessons math teaches you. So I hope I taught you that, and I'll catch you in the next math video. Goodbye, guys.